uh, you know, distance runners were supposed to be really smart, decided to take a shortcut across the throwing area, and a shot put hit him, and he flew about 10 feet, hit him in the stomach, he's okay, but he flew with it. It looked like a cartoon, like a Roadrunner cartoon, and I had that image go through my mind as we were walking through the throws area there, so I hope that doesn't make us lost, because we always like to run extra. Um, one thing, I'm Ross Fleming from Moundsview. I do have to make a plug here for Adrenaline. Uh, they are one of our big sponsors. They have a booth out there. They're a fundraising thing, and don't just stop listening because I said that, like I would do. Um, they, uh, we worked with them a long time ago, and I don't know about you, I don't like selling cookies. I don't like boxes showing up at school and then having to assign them to kids. I hate that. And then you have extra cookies or you don't have enough. Um, they don't do that anymore. Uh, COVID, one of, the, one of the few positive things about COVID, they changed their whole system. Now, uh, the fundraising part is if somebody wants to buy cookies or whatever else they're selling, and this is a triple chocolate, by the way, uh, a crumble cookie. And unfortunately, there's not enough to share with everyone. So, uh, but in any, any event, it's now delivered right to people's houses. So no more big box deliveries, no more sorting for you. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have used the fundraising where it's just a matter of kids sending emails to grandma asking for money. I'm not comfortable with that. This one, the people can actually buy something, but if they want to donate, they can just donate. If they don't want cookies, here, I'll donate 20 bucks to the track program. So uh, Adrenaline is really um, organized, and I really, I think as coaches, we just don't want anything more time consuming things. I'm not very organized, but they, they seem like they very are. So give them a chance. Uh, maybe if you get there, Maybe the smart, smart people here, you get there, there's going to be some cookies left over. So um, they have those samples for you too. All right. Uh, it feels good to be back here after not just a year, but after a couple years where it was kind of iffy with our attendance a little bit down last year with uh, still the residuals from COVID. And then the year before, we just didn't get anything. Um, really pleased to have uh, Addie Helen here. Uh, been around, and, and if you, you, know, you know the name, she's been around for a while. I think the one thing is we know about YZ across country on both sides. Uh, with the girls and boys they have a great um, reputation a great uh, tradition and uh, i know our girls coaches talk about having to go against them and it's uh, one of those things where you're going to raise the level of competition a little bit addie has been um, all over the place as a runner herself and a coach and honestly i'm really anxious to hear i've never i just met her uh, in, a, in a more formal sense uh, uh, today but i've always admired their program and uh, I don't remember, a, a, a down year for YZ is what, second in the section? Something like that. So uh, pretty good reputation there, and I think she has a lot to offer. And if you want to, her bio is out there too, but uh, she ran again lacrosse. I forgot to ask you, uh, was Wilson still around? Yes, yeah, so I ran for Gary for a couple of years. Yep. He drove me crazy, so I transferred to lacrosse. <laughs> <laughs> actually the other way around, but that's a good story. <laughs> All right, I will let her take it away. Addie Helen. Thanks. I don't talk. I haven't talked um, at a clinic before. I've been to you know so many clinics, and I think it's just that um, I think it's tough to put yourself out there, right? And especially like I talk to our girls, when you're kind of the big bad Wyzetta program, uh, we tell them every year like, remember you have a target on your back. You might people might not like you because you, you if you beat them, they don't like you, right? And so um, I've kind of been reluctant to talk uh, because I think for me. Um, giving credit to our success is is really being part of you know the late conference like i'm looking at some fantastic coaches in this room that raised our level of play um, it's giving credit to the college coaches that i had and um, the incredible assistants that allow me to do my job and really let's be let's be clear i haven't run a step for months well okay i ran once last week it was good um, and so giving credit to the girls and their families and our incredible community at Wayzata. So I guess I struggle with like, okay, put yourself out there. Um, and so today what I hope that we do together is one, make connections. Um, I was starting to talk to some folks before we started to fill this place a little bit. And I think that's lacking in Minnesota. Um, during COVID, uh, I was able to get on some national coaching like Zoom calls. And I realized that there's so much social going on in other states for coaches um, that we are lacking that. And so there's that, that's what I'm looking forward to is getting to know you guys, having you ask questions, real questions, like if you want to know real things, ask, and then also offering ideas. 
And so one of the, the ways, the format that I wanted to use today that didn't work because we're in the great hall here um, is if I go over like a topic and it's, it's sort of interesting to you, you have a great idea, you have a question, I'd like to stop and kind of do that along the way. Um, but if you jot ideas down and you're kind of shy and you don't want to say it in front of the group, that's fine. Um, anything I talk about today, uh, I will, I will, will, will be available. But also, um, if you need, if you want any resources, if you want anything that, like I talked about, you can have access to our Google Drive. I mean, it's it's extensive. And I think about, you know, 20 some odd years ago when I started coaching, and you, it's just it's overwhelming, right? Like it's just there's so much you want to create and start, and so don't recreate the the wheel. And I think that's. That's what I would love to see in Minnesota, is that we get a little more time together and we get to share. Okay. Uh, we have lots of coaches from different states coming around or in different communities here today. If you're a class A coach, raise your hand just so you guys can. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, what's, where's our double A folks? So my kid, Orno, right? So Orno Cross Country, a little, little program. I love double A. And then what, what about the triple A folks in here? Cool. And then we have a couple out of staters. What? No, my friend from North Dakota. Anybody else from out of state? Way to go. That a lake up here. I mean, that's almost out of state. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for thanks for being here today. Um, again, my name's Addie, and I don't tend to talk to people at meets. Right? Like I, I feel like I'm busy. I'm busy coaching. I'm busy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm maybe like a little too too control freakish as as a coach, so I don't get to talk to a lot of people at meets, and so I'm. I'm excited to be here today to share what we do. So Ross kind of alluded to this, uh, but my story in the sport is a little like maybe cheesy, but I did I did meet the father of my children at was at a high school cross country. All right, so like I'm a sophomore on the team, he's a big senior. Uh, we had a crush, and the rest is history. All right, uh, and now I find myself back at was at a high school where I ran, uh, teaching a class that I took and loved. Um, and then super lucky to have like an unpaid assistant at my side all the time. And so uh, my husband Jacob and I have three kiddos. We live on the west side in Orno um, and we're currently kind of navigating having our kids in a different program than where I teach and coach. And so literally that's a family issue right now that we're trying to solve. So if anyone has any insight on that, I'd love to hear that today. So that's my, uh, my ninth grader um, who is loving the sport. He's absolutely just um, falling in love with running. So we feel, we feel really proud that we didn't screw that up because our kids have been dragged along, born and raised all summer long at the summer running camp. They go to our girls retreat. They've been out to new um, Nike Heartland every year. And for some reason they still like it, which is really cool. Uh, my youngest Sam is 10 and he's, he's really, He's gonna struggle because he's run the Nike Heartland 5K several times with the entire Wyzetta Girls Cross Country team cheering for him, right? <laughs> like girls screaming his name. Um, and so he's just gonna really have to struggle a lot, I think, with, with future motivation. Um, and then my daughter, she's, she's a seventh grader and she's the reluctant runner. So we, we're kind of, we're hands off with her. We're like, maybe someday. Um, I have seen a spark when you put her on a starting line. She's super competitive. Um, but we're, we're kind of navigating like, you know what, we don't want to make them be runners, um, but we think that's where they're going to end up. So the kids got to go to Nike, uh, Nike this year, Nike Nationals, and that was really special. Um, they love to go cheer the girls on in their basketball games, um, and our runners really take care of our kids, which has been, which has been such a blessing. So graduated from Wise out of 97. I did push play. I got yep, you. Baby. I got you back. Uh, ran, I, I ran for uh, Gary Wilson, and he's definitely a big coaching influence for me. Um, my time at YZ uh, was really positive. Uh, Bill Miles, if you have been around Minnesota for a long time, you for sure have heard his name. If you don't know his name, he's someone you should know. Um, he's starting to kind of slow down a little bit with, with where he's at in coaching, but he was the longtime coach at YZ who I, I truly attribute like both program success. Um, so Bill was a huge mentor for me in high school. He was a mentor for my husband as a coach. Uh, my husband lost his dad when we were um, in like later high school and Bill was really a father to him. Um, and he's someone I really look up to and I attribute a lot of what I learned to him. 
Um, I ran for an awesome coach, Dave Emmons. We coached together for quite a few years at YZ. Have learned so much with those experiences. Um, and then, of course, you know my other college coach, Coach Pat Healy, um, out of Wisconsin. What a brave guy! He's a throws coach and coached cross country. So, right, you learn so much from all these these people that you get to work with. Uh, early on in my days, I started at Shorewood High School in Wisconsin and um, learned a ton from a coach there. They have a ton of success right now. Uh, they're, they're a great program. And then I moved into the Milwaukee Public Schools. So um, two of my coaching experiences early on were in like inner city schools. And so um, really fun to bring distance running in to an inner city school in Milwaukee and just try to build a program. Um, later left and did the Marquette tour for a year. Um, worked at that at, at that level with um, with Dave uh, Urich, and then moved back to Minnesota. Ended up on the east side of St. Paul, Harding High School, coaching Nordic skiing, and then now at YZ. So that's kind of my my history. Um, but really, really thankful for all those experiences and all those coaches that sort of taught me my trade. All right, so. Look at that picture, isn't that beautiful? Seriously, look at that campus. Um, so when we, when we have coaches come in, so it's not like the bat, right? We were just talking about 20, 20 in the graduating class at Battle Lake, right? I'm gonna tell you this. Um, so I don't even think, it's right here, you can't see it, but there's like four football field, turf, turf field. You can get like an 800 meter loop out there. So when I have a coach come into the program, when, I talk to other coaches, I'm like, yeah, we are way set up, right? Like, look at that thing. And then I say, we better be good, right? Like, we have, we have leg up on the competition, right? I mean, after teaching in Milwaukee, coaching in, on the east side, look at that facility. Our community is super conducive to high-level athletics. Our athletic department supports us. They fund us. My families love us. Um, so we have, we do, we have these built-in advantages, right? School size, socioeconomics, all right? Lake, if you run in the Lake Conference, you're gonna get good, right? Like if you have to compete against Minnetonka, Edina, Hopkins, if you have to compete in the Lake Conference, you're gonna rise to the occasion. And so we have these, we have these legs up and I don't wanna start this talk without making sure that I see that. But let's compare a couple teams before we start. Okay, so a 12 year history on team A, all right? Um, grinding through for 12 years, made the state meet once. This is team A. Uh, track qualified three individuals, had uh, several four by eight qualifiers, and then one four by eight team championship. Okay, 12 year span. By comparison, team B with a 12 year history, missed state once in 12 years with nine podium finishes at the state cross country meet. Team B, had 25 track individual qualifiers, eight four by eight team qualifiers, a team championship, and an individual championship. Okay? Some of you folks in the name have to know the answer. That's obviously our program, right? So that was Wayzata. So Wayzata cross country from 98 until 2010 was team A. We had a like literally a 12 year drought, no, no state, Tonka was kicking our butt. Everyone was kicking our butt. Um, and that, those were the days when I was running in college and I don't even know if I noticed at the time. And in 2010, um, I got a phone call from a great friend and that was Dave Emmons. And he's like, Helen, I hear you're back in Minnesota. Let's, let's do this. Like, would you coach again? And I'm like, all right. I had little kids at home, a baby. And uh, I definitely needed that outlet <laughs> when I was staying home. And so we worked really hard to build and recreate and uh, develop. And so team A and B are the same, um, 12 years from the 90s to 2010, and then 2010 to now. And obviously there's a ton of variables, right, that goes into success. And so we're gonna talk about that and also uh, just would love to hear from you guys. So the first thing we did um, was we developed a program that was like online, written, policies, expectations. All right, and so that was kind of huge because that was missing. And so if you want any of this stuff, hopefully many of your program policies are the same, but we really defined what it meant to be committed. Something as simple as attendance, Saturday practice that you're expected to be at every single Saturday. 
Um, something as simple as, um, you know, just that everybody on the team, whether you were number one, number 71, had to kind of buy in and own the program the same way. And so we put a ton of work together, created our first website, and just kind of did our captain policy, our lettering policy. I know we kind of looked around when we created those policies. And if you're a newer coach, or if you're always looking for kind of things to sort of update, um, we have a pretty insane website uh, now. It was built by a website design uh, kid that we knew, and now one of the assistant coaches keeps it up. But all of our team policy stuff is online, and that's by design. Uh, so the kids sign that pledge, they know what they're getting into, um, and you know, no one's bigger than the team. So one of the things that like, if a round table happens tomorrow, like if we're sitting around, I love to talk about like, what's your captain policy? We've tried every rendition of the darn thing, right? You know what we do now? We are, everyone's a captain. Seniors, everyone's a captain. It would, be an ex, it would be an exception if someone wasn't, because I feel like if you've been in the program for at least three years, right? Six years, some of them, and you're not willing to lead and you haven't bought in yet, then you know, you probably wouldn't be there. And so that typically is what we do. Most of you don't have 13 seniors like we do. Um, and I have just found that the heartbreak of not becoming a captain is not worth it. It's not worth ruining a kid's season for, a, for that little bullet on a, on a college um, entrance. So that's a big thing for us. Um, lettering policy, again, every rendition, every year I'm like, I think we're gonna change it. I think we're gonna change it. It's time-based. We got times from like our late conference schools. We, we chatted with them early in. Um, and it's attendance based. So it's like, if you're not there, your lettering time gets slower or faster, excuse me, you lose time. And it tends to motivate, right? There's some, there's some flaws in it in that cross country times are a little bit arbitrary, right? Course wise, but it tends to create that buy-in of like you're on the program. Edina's lettering policy is insane. Check it out, it's on their website. And if anyone else has ideas on a, on a good lettering policy, let me know. Because this is kind of one of those things. So we created these policies and I'll tell you this, it was not easy. Okay, so if you, if you have like looked at our program, so in 2014, we had a pretty decent team, all right? Um, and that team was four years after the start of like the rebuild, right? It took four years and they, they went to nationals and they won. It was, it was pretty insane, I'm not gonna lie. Our fifth runner, Elena Sonneson, who's currently training with Jesse Diggins on the US ski team. So if you're a Nordic person, you've hopefully heard her name. I'll never forget when we created our team policies, arguing with her parents. Her dad was so mad that I said, your kids are staying in town and practicing with us on Saturdays. And it, we literally, it was like a battle. By the end of her career, she's the anchor award at the national cross country meet. She's the, the best fifth runner in the country and goes on to ski D1 College Nordic. And so it was, it was really cool to kind of watch the, the pain of that change with that team. And now 12 years later, every four years, we're seeing the fruits of, of setting that standard. Any questions, comments, or additions to team policy? Because this is kind of boring stuff. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's like the black and white. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, ready? So class double A coaches, right? This is the hardest thing. Cause so I have the kid at Orno, right? So Orno cross country, two, their first two runners, right? Varsity soccer, Nordic skiing. And so it is so tough. So in track, what we do is, and it's, it is distance culture versus track team, right? Is ninth grade, let's explore. We're gonna work with you on your soccer schedule, okay? When we're getting into sophomore year, junior year, certainly junior, senior year, there has to be a choice, right? There has to be a little bit more of a balance. And so I'm gonna tell you this, being big YZ and watching my kid navigate Orno cross country with the size and the, the, the sort of multi-sport kid, I still think there has to be balance because you have to build culture by buy-in by kids being there. And I sat with the Orno athletic director recently because I was like, I just want to, I want to understand this, right? And he was like, I, he even at, with a small school was like, I didn't agree with 
you know, a kid playing soccer and then just getting their varsity spot in cross country. He's like, we still have to kind of make choice. And so it's, 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 a, it's tough, you gotta navigate it. But great, great point. When I'm talking about kids that are just like in the middle of the track season and grabbing soccer. It's tough. We have it. Correct. So, so if you look at Wyzetta girls track last year, okay, and this is like, this, I'm going to be so honest with you. Watch, look at what we were doing sprint wise at the start of the season and what happened at the state meet. We had the same issue. We had coaches like, okay, you got to be at practice. Went and played a soccer tournament over the weekend, injured, out of the relay. Like, it was a disaster by the end of track last year. Because of injury and other sport, we deal with it as well. And so, one of my, I'm thinking of like one athlete, like Mara, Mara McCuller was a really good Nordic skier, and she skied with Kevin Brockman. In the summer, I sat down with Kevin, her, and we discussed her train for the fall, and I was like, she'll be with us. She'll be with us if she wants to be a varsity runner and just try to navigate that. But yes, this is an issue and it's tough, especially if your school is small. So, any, is that, no, help? Say, I, right. So then what, what, if I had a team like that, right? If I was struggling with that, I would have, I would work around it, obviously. But there's certain like, there's just certain tenets of that, like of the team piece that I think you can't neglect. And I'm, I'm struggling with it right now with my kids. Anything else with this? But what, let's talk more. I'm kind of I mean, wouldn't it be fair to say that yeah. you can't just go cold turkey? You right. Know, like, you have to establish that culture, like Addie was saying, where they want to be there. On it's not that they don't want to be there, yeah. but that it's, it, it becomes an expectation. Years. Yeah. Right. So, like, a four-year transition. It, it literally took four years. Just so you can take new kids. So you probably couldn't just do it in a month, you know, that it would, that it would take it's, time. And, and we, will, we will be dealing with it this spring again because we had, we had so much of that in track last year. Um, and, 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 you know, the distance coaches in this room that are not head track coaches or that are not multi-event coaches, you know, I don't know if you feel this way, but like the cross-country team culture, right? It's built in, this, in the fall and it carries into the spring. And so you have this huge advantage there. What we found, and again, going to be very honest, is that our sprinters last year who were watching the cross country culture, like watching the distance side, they were like, we want, like why, we want that. We want that, we want that. And, and I'm like, guys, it, then you have to, you have to build that. And so it's, 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 it's evolving for us on a track team. So, okay. Um, hopefully this is kind of stuff you're doing, whatever. This is just really quick. Um, communication was a big rebuild for us. Um, a weekly email with a weekly schedule. Uh, we have an online Google Doc that we use that I'll show you. Um, and then our website was huge for, pa for parents. Uh, my biggest thing is if I'm not hearing from parents, then it, I feel like our communication must be good. Um, so that was a big goal for us. Um, and then for our large program, just making sure everyone's coached is huge, right? So like if you have 75 girls, uh, we have four coaches at the high school. We're super blessed with that many. And still making sure that everyone's needs are met is always a juggling act. Um, and so that's something we work on a lot with one-on-one -on -one athlete meetings, breaking the team up. Like let's, a ninth, let's have a ninth grade meeting, let's have a JV meeting only. Obviously the varsity meets quite a bit um, on, their, on that end. And then, you know, big team meetings always. Um, something I've tried that I really like and if, you know, I'd be curious if other people have tried it is like the senior exit interview too. Like, as a kid leaves your program, really talking about the program with them, and that can just be in, super enriching with what you get. Um, and I will say this, I have no coaching boundaries. Like, I'm always available, and it's a problem. I'm a mom, I'm a teacher at YZ, uh, but I literally, my athletes call or text often, and that is not for everyone. It's just who I am. I don't know how to shut off that relationship um, on a nine to five, and so that's just me, and, and that's something you gotta choose. Uh, the other piece that we really pushed for and still do, and, and usually it's not a problem, is we want information to go from us to our athletes and then from our athletes to the parents. And it, it should be like, a, it's a life skill. It's something we really think is important. 
Um, however, on occasion, I will call moms. I'll call parents. They're, I always say to the girls, sometimes your moms are my best intel, right? Because I get the like really happy, fun, nice teenager, and then you go home and you're super, you're not very nice to your family, and they, and they have to live with you. But they also know you best, and so sometimes I will directly call moms if we're having some issues. And then um, one of the big other things that we realize is that team drama is something you have to address and nip and get rid of. And um, I've talked to some really good coaching friends who've had those kind of years and those, those seasons of team drama. We're not perfect. This team, the state championship team this year, man, we had a, we had a come to Jesus last spring, I'll tell you. And we had, it a, we had it again, and it, it's, it just depends on the personalities. Um, and so that's something I take head on because obviously if you're not loving each other and respecting each other, you're not racing for each other and you're not winning together. And so I, I find that um, that's really, really important. One of the things we developed after last year is if you have upset feelings, if someone's offended you, text message is not the way to go. And so we, we created a norm with this team, this particular group, that if you have a hard thing going on, it's something you address right away. And it works, but it's a work in progress. Um, anything on this particular pillar, this topic, that anyone has, they like, they've tried, or questions? What, do you, what did you mean there with like group texts for the captains? So, like, do you want them to? Or yeah, to so I would say like if you, so we'll have, this year we had, this is again, leg up, 16 seniors, okay? So they will have group chats to keep communicating but it's, it can't be emotionally based. Like that's an organizational group text, that's an idea sharing group text, and, and we just say like, if you, got, if you have a bigger issue to talk about, do that in person. But yeah, they work really well for us. Question back here. Yeah. Eddie, are you guys using any tools like Team Snap or other? You know, we've tried group me. If I have a young coach, I'll make them do it because it confuses me. Um, so I'm like, that is my, my assistant's job. She's done group me reminders. But the one thing I'll say, even watching my kids program and navigating communication is like the streamline is so key, right? Like if you, if you do a group me and then you're doing an email and then you're using your website and then you're, it gets to be so confusing. So this year we did not group me. I sent an email out once a week with what I'll show you and it went to parents and kids. And that was the first year I've done that because I just wanted to make sure they were getting information. But yeah, anyone else using stuff that works? Yeah, so I can kind of hybrid that. Yeah. I do them a email. Yeah. Because I know parents get it. Yeah. Um, and then I use, I'm going to use the Snap this year. Yeah. So this is the department, I like the department decision. But I use the free uh, app. And I, it was awesome because they don't have my cell phone number. <laughs> and, and See, creating boundaries, this is good. Yeah, I'm creating boundaries, but they also have access to Yep. It's also public. So I can show them, hey, here's what this kid is saying and how I'm responding. That's great. Yep. Um, but I, I use both, and that has worked for me. Does anyone else use better. Team Snap? Like, yeah, what do you, yeah, big team. Our kids get all their information in school now, like school is using. Oh, yep. And all their cross-country programs and their track programs are made, of course, mm -hmm. in school is using. Yep. I just every week I put a thing in Schoology. That's awesome. And then I do all my daily announcements for the kids. Exactly. They see it because they go on there for every right. single class. Yeah. And we just started that uh, in COVID. Like that's a positive thing about COVID. That's what our head track coach does too, Alicia Perscala. Um, she's she's using our like Canvas course for that, and I think that's awesome. I think it's because I'm a PE teacher, so I'm not on it all the time, but that's awesome. Wow. I don't teach anymore either. Yeah, that's true. You have to learn. Yeah. And I also like, do no more paper stuff, so I send course maps. Everything yes. is on there. It's PDFs. It yes. That's awesome. Like that's cool. Up here too. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Cool. So B A N D yep. app. Awesome. 
Any other tools that anyone's using? Go ahead. Google Classroom. Google. Google's my like, yeah. 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 Google Classroom for you guys too. Yeah. Google's like it's insane. Other questions, additions. Again, kind of the boring stuff, right? But all the stuff that makes a difference. Um, okay. So, anyone? Who is that? Anyone? Collector. Look at him. He's an adult, right? <laughs> like what? So, so it was really fun. My husband and I. I don't know why we thought we. We did, but we went to pre last year, pre classic, and we got, we like landed, drove to the track, and like the men's, we just got there to watch Joe run. And it was just, it was such an epic weekend for us. Um, and I sent so many pictures to the, to the girls. So this is like, this is what I will send out um, on a weekly basis. It's, again, if, you, if you're a new coach and you want this, please just ask. Um, look at how gross that is. Like, look how much information, right? And so, um, I'll do all the links on here, course maps, all that. Um, rosters, need information. That's why I started sending this out to parents. Um, links to different articles we're going to talk about. Um, that is, this makes me feel like I've prepared myself and my coaches. And then we do, like, if, if it's the beginning of the season, I got this idea from Matt Gabrielson adding like a, an additional like just a, like a newsletter to the weekly schedule if I have a lot to say. This starts to kind of dwindle down as the season comes together but that was really helpful for us um, and then the other piece is let's see if I can get this to work. Sorry guys. Oops. The other um, thing that I like that we've done is so this is a Dave Emmons and we get we get good results with it not great and so this is something I want to ask you guys what you do is our team training log okay so we'll do a Google Doc right and it and it's it's um, really full of stuff so every week's on there um, the results from the season different cross training plans if kids are injured um, and if you again if a younger coach or anybody wants this stuff links to our strength our core our recover just all of it and I, I did this during COVID I put everything online because I was like if we can't meet and if kids are gonna go do like their own little time trials I want them to be coached and so I just made this one-stop shop it's insane um, but I, I highly recommend um, doing what works for you so this is what I send out this is linked every week anyone have Anything like this that you do that works? Is this ridiculous? <laughs> like, it's, it's too much, right? Yeah. So if you want to see that, check it out. But then I can put like everything I need for the summer on there. Um, it's all there. So that's our communication. All right, so this is the fun stuff. So as we were kind of developing a program, um, we, we really, it was really important to me to do things that the girls look forward to, right? So like building team culture, this is Bill Miles' influence. This is Gary Wilson. Um, a lot of what I learned as a gopher, um, a lot of what I saw Bill do over the years, um, we started to adapt. And so our pipeline obviously is huge, right? With this big school, the leg up like I talked about, but it continue, you need to continue to develop it. Um, so in the summer with our running camp, so like we'll have a 7th through 12th grade running camp. Um, we've added a Rising Stars week to it. And so what we do now is we pump out to Girls on the Run, to our, our little track uh, races we do in the spring. We pump out an invitation to a week-long camp where 4th graders, 5th graders, 6th graders can come to our high school camp. And it's been not huge, but it's a little bit of a something in the community. Uh, that people are loving and so we just bring them to camp we run with them we play we play games and we have a little really low-key race with the elementary school kids um, we're really blessed to have Aaron Burnt who put together youth track meets for ways at us so he does that in the spring it's very low-key it's something I'm gonna do at Orno it's Wednesday nights it costs 40 bucks the kids get a t-shirt they show up to the track and you literally facilitate 50 yard dash 100 yard dash 200 400 800 that's it 
it's so easy. You start, you shoot, you shoot the gun, kids come, they love it. And I think any community size would have, would really have success with that. Uh, we do one spring cross country race because we have, we've had a few PE teachers in the district that um, really get into running and that's really, really neat. And then we have some really, um, really great middle school coaches and athletic directors that are really trying to pump sixth grade run club or sixth grade running experience. Again, school size dependent. And then with our off season, uh, we're, we're really looking to offer stuff for the girls. Um, so summer with the, with the coaching um, waiver, so we sign the waiver and we do a summer running camp. It's really open to any community near us, but seventh through 12th grade. Uh, in the winter, our captains will be encouraged to do a winter run club. So just, hey, meet after school, run. It's that simple. Wayzata has this little dome um, with the turf. It's a, like an indoor facility. On Fridays, it's like open gym for basketball. We open the dome. If you want to do some stuff, you can. Um, and then our, our sprints coaches are, are constantly in the weight room offering uh, track lifts in the winter. So those are the kind of the off-season things we do. And then this is the fun stuff. So our alumni meet has been a Bill Miles tradition that we've carried on. And it's insane to, th to see the number of guys he would get back. Like all the 90s guys would come back, all his 80s guys. He would have hundreds of, of people come back. And so we adopted that and built that. And that's been really fun. And this year was, was really fruitful because my 90s teammates came. And I was like, okay, we're there. We've got it. Um, so that's been really neat for us. And then we do a huge team retreat. I was talking to my, my North Dakota coach friend. They go camping. I want to hear what other people do for their fall retreat because that's really cool. So who does like a fall fun running something? What do you guys do in the fall for? The first week of practice, we go to a, um, like a group camp and they run on the trails and the hills and Bond. camp for a week. Bond. Who else does something kind of unique and cool? Yeah. So key. Yeah. So key. I know Hopkins drives to like, they go to like Wyoming. They go somewhere really far. Anyone else do like a really unique one? A lot of the same things. Yes. And it's it's crazy, right? Yeah. And we 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 do that too. We've done that too because of uh, Bill's influence, and that's been huge, hugely integral in our in our connections with the girls. Crazy, right? You're taking your your high school athletes to Colorado. Like some of you coaches are like, really? Really? But it's, it's really enriching. Um, so then we break into color teams. We do all these fun challenges. Um, we've got some traditions where you make a bracelet every fall. And if you like look at like, an, like a, one of our seniors, they'll have four bracelets from each fall of their, pro, of their, of their history. We got that from a California coach. Um, mantras, Sharpies, writing on our hands. All of these things that seniors and kids look forward to. Um, cake, bake off, pumpkin carving, lip sync battle. It's terrible, right? It's so much work to have fun, but we have to do it. We go to NXR every year. Um, we do destination runs in the summer. And we've even done book books, right? If there's a really good book that comes out, let your mind run if you haven't read it or your, or your athletes haven't read it. I highly recommend Let Your Mind Run by Dina Kasher. So this is us having fun. You know you've made it as a coach when you become a cake, all right? So that, that's, that's me being made fun of by my athletes. Um, this is our team retreat, it's really big. I got this idea from Wilson, he goes to, they go to Ely, Hop goes to Ely with her athletes. Um, and we do that two night overnight. They make fun of the coaches, they do a senior skit, totally roasting us, um, and they just do, we do so many things there. Um, so that's our fun stuff. <clears throat> All right. This, is, this was a huge shift for us as well and something we work on all the time. And I'm a huge believer, and this is something our cross-country team has probably mastered, but our track team has not. And this is where, like, I just keep looking at my Tonka friends and the big programs, like, I'm looking at you guys, and, like, the team feel in track to me is such a bigger deal. And we're still working on it. Um, I told you we kind of show up in the spring as a, as a girls cross country team and then we try to assimilate into the, the rest of the, the events. So, you know, this whole shift of 
running for something bigger than yourself to me is something like that we constantly work on. And I'll tell you what, this team right now, this group of seniors that I just had, it's still something we work on. Like I, I looked at our national cross country meet, I'm like, I don't think we ran very well as a team. Like we did not do that our last meet. And so uh, it's just something we, we talk a lot about. It takes a lot of time to develop. Um, there's gonna be certain leadership and personal, personality styles that will challenge it for sure. Um, but one of the things we do, and I, I would assume most of you do, is before every meet, the varsity is going to have a pre-team meeting. We're going to talk specifically, and it's going to be it's going to be real stuff. The JV is going to have a pre pre you know race meeting and talk real about kind of what we're going to do as a team. Uh, we work really hard at building belonging on our team. Like that's something I'm really proud of. That a a kid who can't break 30 minutes is out for the program and she feels like she makes a difference. Um, we, have a, we have a dean who's our head wrestling coach. And I knew when he gave us a compliment on that that we were doing something right. He's like, I don't get how you do it. He's like, I was at, J I was at um, the lefty right meet and you have these kids who barely can run and they're, so, they're in it, they're competing. And I'm like, that, that's because they, they want to be there, they're excited, they're, they love each other. And so that's something we work really hard on is that everyone, no matter how their performance looks or how their running is, that they feel like they belong to something really special. And in that, we're not a run club, right? We've fought that. We've like, we've, we're not here, we are here to be a great team. We're here to be competitive runners. If that means breaking 30 minutes for you, that's fine, but you're here to get better. And that's, that's a requirement. Um, and that's tough, because we've got some kids who will go walk the trail. When, when they turn the corner, they'll go walk. This year, I kicked a kid off the team. It was the first time in several years. I said, you're not here to get better. It was tough. Um, and you gotta do that sometime. Um, so, one of my favorite team, team talks about this, and, I, and I'm gonna give it to you and use it. And I don't, you know, just use it for your own, because I love when you get little things from coaches. So. Take your kids, like in a little touchy-feely, this is a touchy-feely, take a Sharpie, and have your kids write on their right hand, have someone else do it, you come up and you have the captain write it, and you write the word, you write me on, your, on their hand, okay? This is like a little team, a little team like, okay, this is gonna get good. So write the word me on their hand on the right, and have them do it for each other. And if you have a team that's like not coming together, they're not, they're clearly in it for themselves, or they're just, you're just trying to build something special. This is kind of a fun talk. And what we did this year is we wrote, everyone had the word me on their hand, and those are 75 girls in a fitness center with mirrors, right? And then we share the, the Phil Jackson quote, good teams become great ones when the members trust, trust each other enough to surrender the me for we. And then you have them take their hand and, you, and they put it over their heart. This is so touchy-feely, okay? And then you look in a mirror. And so the first time I did this was like eight years ago and we were like literally at Lunds and Byerly's having a meeting and we were in the bathroom when we did it. And then this year, man, with the 75 kids, we had a huge new crop of ninth graders. It was so neat. And we had been developing You Belong all for the first two weeks of the season. They, they wrote the me on their hand, they put it over their heart, and then we turned the lights on in the fitness center and they looked into the mirror. And when you see that mirror image of me, it becomes we. It's so cool. I don't know what, well, how I made this up, but I did, okay? And they, they're, they're looking in the mirror and then you give them that talk, that like you are the heart of the team. Each of you is the heart of the team. Each of you matters and you are what we are about. And it's just, it's, it's so cool when you take those moments to like really build that and you can come back on it. So that's one of my favorite you gotta break that out only like every four years though, right? You can't keep doing it. You gotta do it once in a while when you really need it. Um, so that was kind of cool for us this year because we had such a nice big group. Okay, um, making team first approach ideas, questions. What are, what are you guys doing? Give me your best coaching speech. What do you guys got? Team first approach. How have you done it? Ross, you've been around a little bit. Well, Try to put that in a nutshell. It's uh, not really an option to not be team first. Right. It's just, it's a general. Right. And so it's the first thing we have to talk about. Yep. And when we go on our retreats, uh, the, week, the first week of the season down at Whitewater State Park, I have rules for Whitewater. Number one rule, we are a team. Yep. Number one rule. And they don't need to use names, they got to call somebody their first name. And uh, that's it, we are a team number one. There's a lot of rules. I'm rule number four as opposed to number three. Um, <laughs> but the rule number one is we are a team. It's been that way for the past.
was awesome. Anyone else like could highlight that with their program? So it's kind of an ongoing thing. I'm from Proctor with the rails of the trains. I live by a railroad track. Yeah. So I collect spikes that are discarded. I pay them our two colors. And after every single meeting, we just go and just kind of pick the people that get the rail. Love that. And I would say 90% of the time, it's not the kid that's first. It's the kid that maybe finished last, but we are about 30 seconds. Yep. And those kids, I, I thought it was kind of cheesy. I called it all last year, like, these kids, like, value that spike. I get yeah. rat for it, they got their spikes laying there. You're like, you oh. It's more of a hammer or something. <laughs> <laughs> that thing so, I made up matters, right? It, it yes, matters. It's yeah. It's super simple. Yep. But it's, it's emphasizing those kids that these do matter for us. Yeah. I love that. I love the spike. We do a rock like that. Anyone else have cool those cool ideas? It helps people a lot. And couldn't wrap it in the track. We talk about the dis different personalities of track. The distance kids compared to the, the oh sprinters or yes. like the meat guys, the, the throwers or like guys that want to eat and grunt. And <coughs> pole walkers like skateboarders. And so we talk about the different personalities. But supporting all those personalities as yep. a team, mm -hmm. and especially in the track meets, not being at the camp all the time and going out and seeing other in warm ups. We don't do like. The distance kids are here, the sprinters are here, the throwers, because we warm up with the whole team yeah. early in the season. Like, we have to be sprinters, distance, throwers all on the line and mixed together like that. So we just try to create that culture and track. Love the that. different personalities are crazy. Yeah, that. personality styles on a oh, team and studying that and talking about it with kids, that's been huge for us too. Other awesome ideas, because I know there's there's so many of us. Uh, in track, we have what's called our pace setter. Mm -hmm. And it's a yellow shirt that we get. We always get about 12 of them. We hand them out to the kids that are the leaders. But it's not by you won. It's you're the one who's holding blocks for kids. You're the one who's picking up uh, the sweat to bring back to camp. You're the ones that. who are carrying stuff. And the first time, we always point out who. We don't really do captains, but it's like these are our captains. They get the first pace setter. And it's these are the people who take care of others before. That's awesome. Love that. Any others? Okay, so I mean, right, this is a room full of ideas. I love the spikes so much, by the way. The railroad spikes. Bill Myers used to crush cans. That was, those were his, like, he literally would crush cans and spray paint them, and that was the award at the Olympic <coughs> I meet. And I'll never forget the first year that our new coach forgot, like Mark forgot to do the can, and all the 90s, all the guys were like, where's the trophies? Like, where's the can? And you're like, oh my gosh, they really love it. All right, here's the stuff that will probably interest those of you who are like, what are you, you know, what's going on with the team? What is, what does Abby Nekonecki's training look like? If you're, if you're the X's and O's person, here we go. Uh, here are kind of the tenets of our training style. So one of the things I learned, um, I think I, I think I first heard it from um, Tin Man on like a, on a coaching, like on a coaching um, online thing during COVID is this whole notion of like really paying attention to lifestyle factors. Um, I think the biggest piece, the art of, of training a high school athlete, whatever, whatever sport it is really, is considering their lifestyle, right? I mean like if you're, if you're a cross country coach and especially a girls cross country coach, I'm gonna say, the type A student athlete, you have to consider it. Um, and so, and getting the kids to tap into like what kind of day did you have? Okay, it's gonna really change. It's gonna really like affect your training. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example. Like this week, so we have a we have a kid uh, who ran down at the U.S. National Cross Country Championships in Virginia. Her name's Addie. You might have heard of her. Okay, she comes home from this trip absolutely wrecked, um, exhausted. Had a lot, had some drama with her passport. She looks like the walk, like Walking Dead on Monday when I see her, okay? Emotional, fatigue. By Tuesday, she's still there. It's finals week now. And I'm like, you're not, you're not training until this whole thing changes, right? And so by, it was yesterday I saw her. And all of a sudden she looked back, like her color's back, she's, she's awake again. And I'm like, all right. She's like, I got 11 hours of sleep last night. And so she kind of had to recover from that. But that's like a sort of, overt version right it's the day-to-day -day grind of these student athletes where if you're not considering their lifestyle factors in their training level then you're really doing them a disservice um, and so we really we talk a lot about that and so what that what that does to our training is so much of what we do is by feel and i would assume there's others in this room that work that way right like 
I remember being a brand new coach and, and reading Daniels and like doing all the formula based workouts for my kids in Milwaukee in the inner city. And then I started to go, Wait, whoa, that kid didn't even have lunch today. And then, it, then we would start practice and I'd go, okay, what'd you guys eat today? Who ate, who ate lunch? Who ate breakfast? And if you didn't eat, I'd be like, you gotta go home. Just go home, go get a big meal. We'll, we'll cook, try again tomorrow. And so the, the, that was, this was really big for me, even at, at a school like Wyzetta, where like, man, if you're stressed out, if, you're, if you are going through stuff, I gotta train you differently, okay? So I feel is a huge piece of our training. Most of our workouts start with me saying, do, do an easy tempo 1K, or do, do a, we're gonna get into threshold next, but all by feel. Okay, and so then we get into training specifics as the workout unfolds. The other big piece, in my opinion, especially if you're training girls in track and cross country, is really considering training age. Um, and this is what's tough when you are th the class A, double A teams with youngsters that you need to fill a roster, right? Like that's tough because now you're, you've got a seventh, eighth grader on your team with a senior. We've had that, you know, three or four times over the last 24 years, uh, but man, it's tough. And so you have to really diversify that training, right? Like I'll never forget when Abby popped into our top seven as a basketball player and hadn't run a step. And now she's going to nationals with the team. Like yikes. We had an eighth grader pop in this year, same thing. She was undeniably part of our top seven. Man, she only trained with us twice a week. And then she was with her middle schoolers running 20 minutes. And so really just being aware of what that training age does for their performance and just the fact that they're performing doesn't mean they can train at that level, okay? Um, the other big piece, and, and I'll, I'll speak specifically about Abby, she's given me permission to do that, is a huge sort of, um, just a passion of mine is looking at their whole career, all right? And, I, and one thing I will say that I'm proud of is that when you've got a group of seniors after four years who are still improving, you know you're doing something right, okay? And so one thing I can, I, can I, I, don't, I don't give myself a lot of kudos in life, but I will say this, if I look at a 12 year repeat of four years, I'm really proud of the way our seniors improve. Um, and there's those stories with varsity and there's those stories with JV, it's not perfect, but really considering the long approach to a kid's career is huge to me, and especially the post high school career of a kid who's gonna go that far. And so giving them a lot of cards to play, like really not using all their cards in volume and intensity is, is huge. And I know I'm looking at Curtis in the back, he's shaking his head yes. Um, so I say to the kids, I don't wanna be your last coach. And I'll tell you this, with this recruiting class, this state championship group with five seniors in the top nine, it was cool, it was very redeeming to talk to college coaches who are so fired up because they're like, you, what? Abby runs 30 miles a week? That's it? Yep. She, she only trains five days a week? Yep. Her sixth day, 30 minute walk. Okay, so we'll get into that. So leaving a lot of cards to play for our kids is really, really big for me um, and, and, and having them have a career beyond us. If a kid on our team doesn't have their period on a regular basis, or if they don't, like, if they haven't gone through puberty, I don't want them running more than five days a week, okay? And so that's something like with our middle school program, they only train through Friday. If they're in high school and they're struggling to like get their period and, and develop, then we really are gonna have to make some major adjustments to their training. If you have gone through puberty and you're, and you're getting your period, you're probably gonna tap out at 35, 40 miles a week in our team, uh, but we can train six days, okay? Um, and then the other thing was cute, I was actually talking to Abby last night, um, and, she, and I said, okay, Neck and Necky, look, look at this presentation, what else do you, did you learn? What else, what else is important to you about our training in our, in our program? And she's like, well, Helen, you like always change the workouts, like on the, like, you always like change the workouts, you adjust the workouts. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, I do that. And so one of the things she, she reminded me of is like, we, this, I, can, I can picture it this fall, we run to this hill, we have a quarter mile hill that we do with a specific workout on where it's 200s and 400s. It's typically not split based, but of course kids who are type A take splits and they, they write, they're reading their watch. And I'll never forget we got there this fall to do it for the first time. 
and it was just it was gross it was so gross out right i thought the trees would have like given us some shade we get there it was just the wrong time of day it was hot it was gross the girls did two intervals and we bagged the whole thing and i'm sure you many of you coaches have been there before and then you got to say like that's okay we'll, we'll try again but even just little adjustments like you should run down in this group today you should run up there okay you're done today go hit the bike all those adjustments but teaching your kids like you're not doing that because they can't you're doing that to keep them safe and for the long-term um, success of their season okay so let me finish training down and we'll, we'll talk again we typically cross train once a week so our girls run most run five days a week with a six day cross train um, especially developing runners some kids might only run three days a week in our program we are gifted with this fitness center with these sad little bikes in it, right? There's like 12 bikes. And um, it's always kind of like this battle, like who gets the bike, right? And especially when you're like dealing with the boys and the girls team at the same time in the fitness center. Um, and so some of our kids cross training will be a huge part of their training until they're ready to run. So we do a ton of pendulum swing with cross training to mileage. Um, we, we do at least two recovery days between every hard effort. And that's been a huge piece to our, our training success lately. I'm watching the way my kids training, I'm watching just the, over the years, so always two recovery days between hard efforts. Um, and then no one runs or trains seven days a week on our team. I, I think that should be safe for college or adulthood, pro lifestyle, it's just not who we are. I want Sundays to be off and just rest and don't think about running. We talk a ton about how to train, we, I show girls, um, if you haven't, if I, I use Run Fast Coach. Do you guys use that? Does anyone use runfastcoach.com? Tin Man's, uh, I'm not a huge, I'm not like pro Tin Man here, but I loved their training paces calculator. If you haven't gone there, check it out. It's super helpful. Um, but we talk a lot of, they, the girls understand, okay, what is tempo? What is threshold? What is critical velocity? What is 10K pace connected to that? What is 5K pace? I want kids to have a watch and understand pacing, and yet we train by feel so much. And so it's, it's kind of this dance for us. Um, one of the things we do with a team of 70, with our, with our big team, is everyone is in charge of their training mileage. Okay, so we teach progression of mileage, how many days that week you should run, and they have to create that. They have to individualize it. And I have to tell you, I don't know why, and you guys have had these years, and then you have the years where you're, you've got illness and injury. We, had, we literally had three girls on the team injured this year. I don't know what happened, but I gotta, I'm gonna be like analyzing this year, because I was talking to my other colleague, they're like, what is that? Some years you have, you have all injuries. And so um, really individualizing, I know this season for us was big, um, and we, we stayed pretty healthy. Um, and then we talk a ton about injury rehab. Cross training is a big deal. I was injured in college, broke my foot on the GRIAC course as a gopher, um, injured on and off all the time. And so I learned a ton about rehabbing after injury, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, and so that's, that's big for us. Okay, so any like style questions or additions? That was a very general overview. Uh, Courtney Brand from Eden Prairie. Great um, to meet you. Hi. Um, okay, so I have a question about cross training. Yeah. Um, we and I mean our program is co-ed, so we kind of, and I'm sure everybody's falling into this, where we are struggling with um, if we have kids that are injured, um, how we can kind of manage still taking our kids on workouts, but yes. then So, and we, so picture this, so why is that a big, why is that a, you saw the campus, no pool on campus. No pool, I'm like what? You didn't put a pool in the building, right? And the fitness center is like, for the size of the building, it's so small. So we do have four coaches, and if someone's on a bike and we're outside on the softball loop, fine. If a coach is in there, great. There's years where I'm like, someone has to be in there, sometimes they don't. Kids will go to Lifetime in the morning and get in the pool there uh, to cross train. It's, it's a 
it is literally a second job to, to if you have injuries and building cross training in creating the plan keeping them organized it is i have no good answer but yeah it's the few bikes we have in the fitness center some are right away when practice starts others then have to jump on after or hey you got to get yourself to the pool if there's one upperclassman injured that kid's going to take that they're going that kid's going to take leadership at the pool so yeah it's tough i don't know if anyone has any better option answers but we're in the same boat it's it's not easy all right okay so some training like some of our some of our big workouts so this is these are kind of the, the main things we do um in track and cross country so our long run is key so i look at training and, and hopefully you guys do too but two to three week training blocks the long run has got to be there at least two times at least every two weeks we do various types of long runs we'll do progressive long runs We'll do long runs with 10th pickups. I love this one. Get the watch on. Every point four, every point nine, you're gonna do a 10th of the mile pickup within that long run. So you might warm up for two miles and you might do five to six miles of 10th pickups, okay? Uh, and then we, we do, some long runs are just recovery volume. Like just go run slow, okay? Just go run long and slow. Moderate training paces are our bread and butter. So this is a huge like soapbox for me as a coach. Um, I want to develop aerobic beasts and leave the card in college to go really hard at, into a workout. I want to develop aerobic beasts and leave the mileage card to college, okay? So we do a ton of tempo, comfortably hard AT. Even if you're an 800 meter runner in track, you're gonna have an, a killer aerobic base, okay? Um, we, we're not a peak ballet program, and here's why. You might disagree with me. When we, when, we pee, when we go too deep into a workout, in my opinion, in high school, we run the risk of overtraining or an early peak. Like the stimulus from a really high-end, high high-level workout, in my opinion, we, we peak for the next race or two, and then we're kind of like licking our wounds afterwards. So the peak ballet for me in high school doesn't work, it works for college programs and pro teams because their recovery and their management of that high level training is there. Okay, so what I mean by that is this. When our varsity goes out and runs, there's not a lot of days where they're running 8.30 pace. Like that's, that, that would be like their recovery volume. They're running at a really nice steady state a lot of the days. Okay, so like if you saw like Abby's 10 mile progressive run paces, I still go, huh? What? Did you just end that run in you know, like 5.30 pace? Just by feel, because it felt fun. And so we do a ton of aerobic, like moderate training paces. Um, um, Chris with Minnesota Distance Elite. Curtis, that's, so Lundstrom, this, this is who he is. Lundstrom, he, he's, he, like, he, I really respect him a lot. And if you talk to Chris, you're gonna, you're gonna, he does a ton of moderate training paces. He had a, one of his newsletters recently was, was the best description of moderate training paces I've ever seen. And I emailed him, I'm like, thank you, because I could never have said it that way. So that's big for us. Um, everything we do often, very rarely, is it start fast, but a lot of things we do is start slow and fast. Until we have to be ready for like the national meet and we're gonna have to get off the line fast, then we start to do some race, race simulation psychology type workouts, but really everything's ease into it. And, and there's, there's something with energy systems there that is a whole nother talk. And then we have done a lot with longer intervals. Like when you tell a kid we're gonna do like a 2400 meter interval, they're like barf, right? But when you put a team on a loop and they do have to do that together for that long, we've done that long of an interval before. Because it, there's just so much emotionally and mentally going on in that it's not hard it's just mind-numbing and so those are some of the things we do for cross country not so much in track not a lot mile repeats k repeats 2k's uh, but sometimes those long interval workouts are, are really key every few week training blocks uh when i started coaching i would i would map out the whole season i would periodize the whole season and then i i, I realized that was just not worth it 
And so now what we do is I look at our training in two to three week training stimulus blocks and I want to touch on all training stimulus. So like we will still do anaerobic threshold the week of the two weeks of championship season. And so I, I like to really touch on all systems and keep that stimulus similar. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this out loud for the first time, but I screwed that up for nationals. I dumped our lift too early and I dumped intensity for two of my seniors too early and it paid, we, we, we had a couple kids underperform because of it. And so kind of constantly analyzing what training stimulus in those short training blocks is really key um, and it's not always easy. We were trying to win their first state championship and get out to nationals and it, it was tough. It was a tough uh, like triple peak kind of. Uh, let's see if there's anything else you want to get questions. What? Wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. You know what I would say, Tom Sharp? Yeah. Get her for the cross country clinic mm -hmm. to do just the training part. Yeah. This part yeah. right here, because I hate I hate cutting her off because this is right. the, this is the meat work. I think we're done though. Like this is we're almost done. Look, so close. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. Hey, this PowerPoint will be there. Um, they're gonna put it up on the website. It's all you don't even need to hear me talk. It's faster. If you have any specific questions or want to look ahead, I'll be here. And we have a we have our round table. Yeah, we round, have a round table, table uh, tomorrow. Yeah, um, door prizes are gonna be during the clinic. We've got back here again at 10:30, but you have door prizes out there. Yeah. Need be presents win. Thank you. So I don't want you to go and forget my chance to peace. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Get in there.